Hi, this is Tom, and in this screencast, we're going to show you how to build a blog reading application using Ember.js. Ember is a JavaScript framework for building ambitious, URL-driven web applications. And the app in particular that we're going to build, you can see up here at the top, has an about page. It has a list of all the blog posts available. And when you click on one of these posts, you can see it displays it over here on the right-hand side without removing it from the left-hand side, without removing this list. And if we want to make an edit to one of these blog posts, we can just click this edit button, and you can see that as we type, the blog post changes below automatically. So the first thing we're going to do to get started is go to the Ember.js website and download the starter kit. The starter kit is a zip file that contains all the HTML and JavaScript that you'll need to get started. We're also going to go to the Chrome Web Store and search for the Ember Inspector. The Ember Inspector is an extension for Chrome's developer tools that allows you to both understand and debug your Ember applications. We'll show you in just a moment how it works. Now that we've downloaded and unzipped the starter kit, let's open it up in our favorite editor. I'll be using Sublime Text, but you can use whatever you want. You can see that the starter kit automatically includes Ember.js and all of its dependencies, uh, namely handlebars and jQuery. As we're building our application, all of our handlebars templates are going to go into index.html, and all of our JavaScript is going to go into app.js. I'm also going to include some additional CSS and JavaScript libraries that I need to build the blog reader. In this case, I'll include Twitter Bootstrap CSS, as well as Moment.js, a date formatting library, and Showdown, a library for converting Markdown into HTML. Now that we've got all of our dependencies installed, I'm going to switch over to the app.js, and I'm going to delete all of the stuff in here that the starter kit comes with. Uh, we're not going to be needing this. The only thing that we need here is the app, the Ember application instance, uh, and this is the thing that kind of boots up the Ember application. The next place I'm going to go is back to our index.html file, and the starter kit also comes with some handlebars templates that we're not going to be needed. So let me go ahead and delete all of these. And what I want to do is actually replace this with just some static HTML that's been marked up to look good in Twitter Bootstrap. So let me just paste this in here. Now, if we open this up in the browser, we should see that this template has been rendered automatically. So just by creating an Ember application instance, that's us telling Ember that there's an application template that we want it to render automatically to the screen. Now, looking up here, we'll see that there's two different areas. There's posts and about. So let's work on the about section first. What we'd like is that if the user comes into slash about, it renders the about template onto the screen. Now, in Ember, the way that you get a template on the screen is to first think about what URL is associated with it. So let's switch over to our editor, and I'll go back to our app.js file. And uh, to define the URLs in our application, we'll say app.router.map. This is a, a method that we can call, and this method takes a function. And inside of this function, we just want to define all of the URLs in our application. So in this case, at slash about, we want to render the about template. So we'll say this.resource about. So now that we've got our route defined, I want to create an about template. So to do that, I'm going to go into the index.html file. And just like before, we had the script tag with a type attribute set to text x slash handlebars. I'm going to do the same thing down here below. I'm going to say type equals text slash x handlebars. But I'm also going to give it an ID. And the ID here is the name of the template, in this case, about. And you can see that this lines up with our, with our URL. So I'll just paste some static content in here that I want to display on the screen. Now, if I switch back to my browser, I'll refresh the page and nothing happens. Well, why not? Well, obviously, we haven't visited slash about yet, so the browser doesn't know what to render. So let's come up here to the URL bar. I'll type uh, hash, because we're using hash bangs. We'll say slash about. Hit return. Still nothing's happening. Why not? Well, the reason for this is that we haven't put what's called an outlet into our application template. So remember that the application template is the template that's rendered on screen. It's always visible to the user. Um, but what we need to do is put in an outlet, which is just a placeholder that gets filled in with the template associated with the URL. 
So we'll just use the outlet helper to tell Ember this is where templates get rendered when the URL changes. So let's save that and go back to our browser and refresh. And now you can see the static content that we have is being rendered into the application template. Now let's take a look at what this application looks like using the Ember inspector. So if I open the developer tools, I'll hit Command Option J on my Mac. This will bring up the developer tools. Uh, if you click on Ember, you can see this has no Ember application detected, but we've obviously got an Ember application here. And the reason is that uh, Chrome has much stricter security settings when you're loading files off the, uh, the local hard disk. So you can see that we're using the file protocol here. So uh, what I'm gonna do is open my Chrome preferences and go to extensions. And I'm just gonna come down here and click on allow access to file URLs for the Ember inspector. So let me close this tab now. And if we refresh the page, you can see that it's now detecting our Ember application. And if you look, you can see that it's actually showing us a hierarchy of all of the templates that we've defined. So if I hover my mouse over application, you can see it's actually highlighting in page uh, the region on screen powered by the application template. And if I hover over the about uh, template, the, the string about here, it's highlighting that sub template where the outlet was that the, out, the about template was rendered into. And if we click on this routes tab here, you can see that it's actually showing us all of the routes defined in our application. Uh, in particular, you can see that we've defined the about route. So the URL for that is slash about, and that's showing the about template. You can also see that there's uh, this kind of implicit route, which matches just slash. This is what we call the, the uh, index route. Now, it's probably not a tenable long-term strategy to have our users be typing in the URL manually in the address bar of their browsers. It would be nice if, when they clicked on these links, you could get back and forth, but these are actually just stubs right now. So uh, the next step is just turn these into real links. So let me switch back to our code editor. Um, just real quick, I'm gonna make a resource. I'm gonna make a URL for posts. And this is just a placeholder. Uh, we'll fill this in with a template later. Now I'm gonna switch over to index.html and what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace uh, these stubbed out A tags with the handlebars helper link to. And this is what we call a block helper. So this needs an opening, uh, opening helper and a closing helper or a tag may be one way to think about it. And then I'll just do the same thing here for the second link. So link to about. And then I'll also just close this handlebars helper. So now if we switch back to our browser and refresh the page, um, you'll see that not only is there an about, uh, an about route, there's also now a post route. So let me close this. Uh, and if we click on about, you can see that this now links to the about route. And if I click on post, this will also link to the post template if we had one defined. So there are a few things to note here. The first is that as we move between these, uh, these links, you can see that it's actually keeping the URL up to date for us automatically. We're not writing the code to do that. That just happens automatically. Um, and if we were to switch back to our CSS, and if we were to add a class of active, we'll just make this font weight bold. You can see now if I refresh the page, um, every link using the link to helper gets this active class name applied to it. So it's very easy to add styling to indicate whatever the currently active uh, route is. So far, everything we've done has been pretty static. Uh, what we'd like to do now is if we click on this post link, what we'd like to happen is to see a dynamically generated list of all of the posts available. And we really want that to be backed by some kind of JSON object. So let's take a slight diversion here and just understand that in Ember, a template is always backed by a model. Now, usually that model is some kind of JSON that comes in from a server, but it can really be anything. And the cool thing about Ember is that when that underlying model changes, the template will actually automatically update itself. You don't need to write any code that says go into the DOM and make sure it matches the new reality. That sort of thing just happens for you automatically. Now that we understand that templates are backed by models, we know that we have two tasks. The first is to create a post template. And the second task is to specify which model should back that template. So let's go ahead and define the template first. So I'm gonna come into our index.html file here. And I'm going to just paste in a template that I prepared already. So a couple things to call out. The first is, remember that its type attribute is text slash x dash handlebars. And we've given it the ID of posts. That means that when you visit the slash posts URL, it's going to render this template. The next thing is that we are using some handlebars helpers inside of here to dynamically power this HTML. So in particular, we're using the pound each helper, which basically says, take the content inside of it 
And if your backing model is an array, repeat the snippet once for each item inside of that array. Now that we've got the template set up, let's switch back over to our app.js. And the first thing I'm going to do is just bring over some fixture data that I've got. We're not plugging this into a real server. So I'm just going to use some fake data for right now. I'll paste this in at the bottom of the file. So you can see that this is just a variable called posts. And posts is just an array of plain old JavaScript objects. So nothing fancy going on here. Well, now I've got my template. Now I've got my model. How do I combine these two things together? Well, in Ember, there is an object called the route. And the route is responsible for specifying which model uh, a template should be backed by. So in this case, because I want to specify the model for the posts template, I'm going to create a route called posts route. So I'll do that by saying app.postsRoute equals ember.route.extend. So this is just creating a subclass of the route object. Now routes have a method called model. And this is a hook that Ember calls into when it needs to ask you, what is the model I should be using for this template? So I'll say model and function. And here, I'll just return this post variable that we defined at the bottom of the page. Now, if I were to switch over to my browser and refresh, you can see that we have a dynamically populated list of all of the blog posts. Basically, every, every blog post that we have in our fixture right here is now being rendered onto the screen. So now that we have this dynamically populated list of posts, what we'd like to happen is that if you click on one, it'll show some more detail, like, for example, the contents of it. Now we know that in Ember, if you want to show a template, you need to think about the URL. So let's switch back to our app.js file and we'll create a new resource, although we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. So I'm gonna say post, and uh, this, so this is the singular instead of the plural. Uh, but unlike all of our previous templates, instead of there always being the same model, the model backing this template actually changes depending on, on which post you're viewing. Now we need to somehow capture that in the URL. In the URL, we need to specify which post we're looking at. So I'm gonna say here, I'm gonna pass an options hash, and this takes a path, and we're just gonna say, uh, this guy will be called post underscore ID. So now that we've created this post resource and we've specified how the post's ID should go into the URL, let's go and actually create that template. So let me switch back to index.html here. And just like before, I've prepared a, a handlebars template inside of a script tag. And this is uh, just the same as before. These are just pulling attributes from the particular model backing this template. So this is saying, for example, get the title property. This is the excerpt. Here's the full body of the post. But now that we've got this list of posts, how do we tell the app, hey, transition into this post template? And by the way, here's the specific post I want you to show. Well, just like before, we're going to use the link to helper. So let me say link to, and the name of this template is just post, and I'll put a closing link to. Um, but one thing that you need to know about the link to helper is that it actually takes an optional argument, which is the model that you want to display. So in this case, I'll say this, which is the model inside of the each. So it's looping over a list of all the posts, and, and this is going to be whichever model, uh, whichever post that we click on. Now, if we switch back to the browser and I refresh the page, you can see that these have all become links now. And when I click on it, you can see it's now showing us the post template that we had defined. And perhaps most importantly, check this out. The ID of that post is actually being put into the URL for us automatically. Now, if we hit the back button, we can go see the list of the posts again. And if we click on a different post, now you'll see that ID two instead of one is in the URL. And again, we can come back here and we'll see the list again. So this is great, but what we said that we wanted initially was that when you click on one of these posts, instead of replacing the entire template, like you're switching between post and about, instead we'd like to keep the list on the left-hand side, and instead of replacing it, we want to render this post template next to this content over here. Well, the good news is that Ember has a feature called nested routes, and what this allows you to do is instead of replacing the template above you, you can render into it. So let me show you what I mean. I'll switch back to our app.js file here. And instead of post and posts being siblings, I'm gonna pass a function to this resource and I'm just gonna move this inside of it. So this is what we call a child route. This is a child route nested inside of its parent. And now um, all I need to do is make sure that my posts template includes an outlet inside of it. You remember this outlet? This is where the child 
template gets rendered into. So this is telling it, hey, when you render this child template, render it in here inside this div with the class of span nine. Now, if I come back and refresh the page, you can see when I click, instead of replacing this list, it's actually gonna render it into it. And again, if we bring up our inspector, you can see that now our hierarchy shows the application template, the post template, and then inside of it, this post template. Now that we can see a particular post, let's give the user the ability to make changes to it. I'm gonna switch over to our HTML file and I'm going to add some editing UI to our post template. So I'll just add it up at the top here. Uh, let me delete this. So what this is saying is if, the, if we're in editing mode, show the post edit partial, and you can see that there are some buttons here and these buttons are using the action helper. Now the action helper just sends events to either your application's controller or your route when some kind of UI event happens. In this case, if the user clicks on the button. So what we're saying is that when the user clicks the edit button, we want to send uh, the edit action. And if they click the done button, we want to send the done editing action. Now I'm gonna switch over to our app.js file and I'm gonna make a new object called a controller. Now in Ember, a controller is an object that stores application state and it responds to events from your templates. So in this case, you can see I've got a property called is editing false. So this isn't persistent state. We don't save this on the model because if the user were to refresh the page, they wouldn't necessarily expect that they would still be in editing mode. Similarly, you can see that we have this actions hash that contains methods for each of the actions that we're sending from our template, right? So if you remember here, we're saying send the done editing action when we're done editing, or if we wanna go into editing mode, send the edit action. We're handling those here inside of this actions hash. And if we look at the implementation, you can see inside of the edit action, we're just flipping this Boolean flag from false to true. And then in done editing, we go back. So now all we need to do is go back to our template and you can see that we are including another template by using the partial helper. So this partial is called post slash edit. So uh, this is just a mechanism for uh, breaking up your templates if they start to get a little bit big. So I'm gonna paste that template in here. Now you can see that this is just a little bit of an editing UI. So this is creating a bound uh, input tag. It's binding it to the model's title property. There's another one similar for excerpt. And then finally there's a text area for editing the body. Now if I save this, I'll switch over to my browser. And now if I click on one of these posts and I click on edit, you can see it's now putting up this editing UI for me. And this is actually live bound. So as I make changes here, you can see as I type, it's not only changing down below here where the title is being used, but also here in the list on the left-hand side. So now we can click the done button. This will end editing. You can see we can click around, we can edit another post. Uh, but I'm noticing a problem with this application. And the problem is that if I click the reload button, you can see that the application breaks. And the reason that it breaks is that when you refresh the page, it throws away everything, including those JavaScript objects that were backing the template. So of course, what the application needs to do is reconstruct those models from the URL. In this case, our URL is slash post slash two. This is the ID of the post that we want to display. But unfortunately so far, our application doesn't know how to turn this URL slash post slash two into the JavaScript object that has the ID of two. Well, remember in Ember, the object who's responsible for translating the URL into a model for a template is the route. So before we had a posts route, but now I'm going to add a new route called post route singular. And remember, this is the object responsible for giving the post template its model. Now, this is a little bit different from before because it's a little bit different. Uh, our resource is a little bit different because it has what we call a dynamic segment, right? Part of its URL is not static. It's dynamic based on the ID of the model. So this uh, post underscore ID gets passed in as part of this params hash. You can see that we're uh, looking for uh, looking through the posts array looking for the first post whose ID property matches the ID in the URL. And we're just returning that from the model hook. So this is just telling Ember, hey, uh, when you come into slash post slash two, for example, go find the first post whose ID is two in our fixture data and make that the model of the template. So now we've made this change and we refresh the page. I should probably say first, refresh the page. Now you can see that the application works. Okay, so I'm noticing a few more problems. 
The first one is that this date was obviously intended to be consumed by computers, not humans. So uh, what I'd like to do in this case is create what's called a handlebars helper, which we can use in our handlebars helpers to help format specific values. So I'm going to make a new helper called format date. I'll add this right here. This is going to rely on the moment.js formatting library. So this just takes a date as an input value. It uses the moment API to convert it into a string that contains the date, but relativized from the current time for a human to read. So now that I've created this format date handlebars helper, I can just go back to my handlebars templates and wherever I have a value, I can just put the name of the helper right before it. So in this case, I have the format date helper. I'm just going to insert that right before this date property. And now if I go back and I refresh the page, you can see now instead of that, that ugly computer date, I'm getting this nice relative date eight months ago. Another thing I'm noticing is that down below, this isn't actually HTML. This looks like it's markdown. So in addition to the format date helper, I am also going to create a new helper called format markdown. And this is just going to use the showdown JavaScript library. You can see I'm creating a new helper here called format markdown. This is going to take some markdown as input, and it's going to return that, uh, that markdown turned into HTML. Now, it's important that your handlebars helpers by default escape any HTML that you might return, because this could make you vulnerable to an XSS attack. So, if you want to opt out of that XSS protection, what you'll want to do is return a new handlebars.safe string. This is telling Ember and handlebars, hey, I've taken responsibility for making sure that there aren't any potential XSS attacks in this HTML that I'm going to render to the screen. So now that we've uh, got this format markdown helper, just like before, I'm going to go back to my handlebars templates. And everywhere that I was previously outputting uh, this raw markdown, I'm going to replace that with our format markdown helper. And we'll do the same thing down here for the body. Uh, it looks like I accidentally took off one of these opening curlies. Now if I refresh the page, you can see that instead of that ugly markdown, we've actually got this really nice uh, formatted HTML. So it's taking the markdown, turning it into HTML. And what's really cool, I think, is that this is all live bound. These helpers update automatically. So if I were to expand this and add a new header, you can see that as I type, it's actually formatting this text. So I think that's pretty cool. And that's the kind of stuff that you can't get with server rendered web applications. So let's take stock of what we've built here. Uh, if we come into slash posts, you can see it will give us a list of all of the posts in our application. If we click on it, instead of replacing the whole template, you can see it will show it over here. We've got this edit UI that we've uh, broken apart into maintainable different templates. We can we can refresh the page. If we command click one of these links, you can see that we haven't broke command clicking. We can click the forward and back button. URL support works really, really great. So this is a, a pretty cool app. And I think uh, if we switch back to our editor, you'll see we've only written, uh, this is 44 lines of code, including white space, which is not bad. I'm not clowning the fixtures here, but application code is under 50 lines of code. And I think for what we've built, that's quite impressive. There is one last thing that I want to show you that I think is, is pretty cool. So, uh, so far we've been using fixture data. I actually have a JSON API that I use for my blog. So what I want to do is actually just remove this fixture data and replace it with a live JSON API actually pulling live over the network. So the first thing I'm going to do is just scroll to the bottom of this file and I'm going to delete all of this fixture data that we had before. Save. So that's gone now. So one thing that's really cool about the routes model hook is that it can handle either synchronous or asynchronous data. And this looks the same. So for example, uh, right now we're, we're synchronously returning this posts array, but I can take this and I can replace it with this call to jQuery. So uh, jQuery's get JSON method returns a promise and the model hook supports promises out of the box. So anything that I return from here that's a promise, it will actually wait to render that template until that promise has been fulfilled. In this case, until this JSON request, you can see I'm using a JSONP API, has finished. And then you'll note what I'm doing uh, here is that with, like with any promise, we can add a dot then on the end of it 
And this actually gives us an opportunity to change that data a little bit. So in my case, my JSON API, uh, the post has a property called content, but if you recall from earlier, our templates are assuming a property called body. So I'm just writing a little function here that will translate the JSON data coming from my server into the, into the format that my template expects. And I can do a similar thing here for the post route. So this is how to get a list of all of the posts. Uh, and then if we come in at, for example, slash post slash two, uh, I'll paste this in. This is just a similar thing that's making a JSON request to my uh, JSON API in my blog. And you can see that we're actually interpolating uh, the ID of the post that we want to look up. And again, doing that same aliasing of the content property to body. So I'll save this and I'll switch over to my browser. And if we refresh the page, you can see that it's actually loading all of the blog posts from my blog using this JSON API. Now I can see uh, that there's some HTML formatting here. So I'll switch over to my template and look for where the title is being used in this list. Um, I can tell handlebars not to escape a property by putting it in triple curlies instead of just double. So I'll save and refresh. And now you can see these are being formatted exactly as before. Uh, I'll click on this. You can see it's actually displaying the post in line here. I can edit it as before. So I can like chop off this bit. I can say done. And you can see that it's formatting these dates correctly. You can see I don't blog very often. <laughs> so three months ago, seven months ago. And you can see that it's actually putting the ID of the post into the URL automatically. So if I were to refresh the page, you can see that that exact same data comes up. I hope you've enjoyed learning about how to build apps using Ember.js. I think you'll be surprised to find out that as you build out these applications, it doesn't actually require dramatically more code. Every new feature is only just a little bit on top of what you had before, and it scales really nicely across teams too. So if you're interested, I would recommend that you check out the guides on the Ember website. We've got really in-depth guides that will help you become an Ember expert. And I'd also recommend that you check out the community section. This is a great way to get in touch with the community, find out how to join a meetup, uh, get help on Stack Overflow. Uh, if you need anything, please join us in the IRC channel. We're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thanks for watching.